Hey guys, Brady here in St. Augustine, Florida, and I'm in my friend Dave's hangar. Dave is the Waco biplane pilot. He's also got a friend in here with the Beechcraft Model 18 behind me. And if you're into aviation history like me, this is an aircraft worth talking about. Between 1937 and 1969, over 9,000 of these were produced, making it one of the world's most widely used light aircraft. It's a tail dragger, it's a low wing twin engine, really, really cool, lots of history. During and after World War II, over 4,500 of them were used in military service. What's cool about this particular model is it's pretty much all stock, and I'm pretty sure it was made in 1942 and then refurbished in the 50s. Let's have a closer look. There are two 450 horsepower Pratt & Whitney radial engines, retractable tailwheel undercarriage, all metal construction, and was fairly conventional design for the times. There have been all kinds of military versions and civil versions of this airplane. It can also be mistaken for the larger Lockheed Electra series of airliners like Amelia Earhart's Lockheed Electra 10. In the military, it was used as an aircrew trainer for bombing, navigation, and gunnery, photo reconnaissance, things like that. The United States Army Air Forces used them as well as the United States Navy. Most of the bombardiers and navigators trained in these aircraft. Shortly after the war, this was the preeminent business aircraft. It's also been used for aerial spraying, sterile insect release, fish seeding, dry ice cloud seeding, aerial firefighting, airmail delivery, ambulance service, numerous movie productions, skydiving, freight, weapon and drug smuggling, sky riding, banner towing, and stunt aircraft. Whew, yeah, it's been used for quite a few things. Many are now privately owned around the world, but several do remain in service with small airlines worldwide. This particular one started out as an AT-7 and was used by the Army Air Forces to train navigators during World War II and for a number of years after the war. Three students and an instructor were carried on each flight. Each student had a desk similar to the one he would work from and a bomber or transport and they took turns practicing their navigational skills. The primary difference between these aircraft and a standard Beach 18 is the addition of an astrodome behind the cockpit for the students to use while working on celestial navigation problems. This one was converted for civilian use sometime after the war, so the astrodome is not equipped anymore. You'll notice it has a twin tail, also known as an H tail. Separating the control surfaces allows for additional rudder area or vertical surface without requiring a massive single tail. On multi-engine propeller designs, twin fin and rudders operating in the propeller slipstream give greater rudder authority and improved control at low airspeeds. A twin tail can also simplify hangar requirements and in some cases reduce the aircraft's weight. It also affords a degree of redundancy. If one tail is damaged, the other may remain functional. So there are a few reasons twin tails were being manufactured and studied. I hope you enjoyed my static tour of this airplane. And if you see one up close or get to fly in one, maybe you'll know a little more about it now. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and tag along with me on my aviation journey, my travels abroad, and more. Thank you.